Hey everyone, today I'll be walking you through a few techniques for using request animation frame to do animation using the native rendering frames. You can see I've done a little setup already. Just a minimal HTML5 document with a couple scripts. Uh, this one is jQuery uh, for DOM manipulation. This one is the request animation frame polyfill, which I talked about in my previous post. Uh, there's a link to that post in the description and a link to just this polyfill if you want that. Um, this is where we're going to be doing our coding. Uh, if we flip over to the browser, you see that, let's re refresh this, uh, we have two blocks. This is just the square. This is what we're going to be animating. It'll be moving over to the right. This is just a line to let you know where it should be stopping. So you can see it visually. So let's make that block move. We're going to start out with just listing a few properties and variables for the animation. So we're going to create the ball, which will be the ball, which will be, of course, the ball div that we'll be animating. Next up, we're going to be setting the distance that this ball needs to travel. 800 pixels. So uh, the line is 850 pixels from the left. This, this quote unquote ball is 50 pixels wide. We, to get to the right edge, to hit the left edge of this, we need to move it 800 pixels. So that's what we're doing. Uh, now we'll set the number of seconds we want the animation to take. We'll just set three, so it's slow enough to see, but not so fast. Or er, not so slow that you get bored watching it. So next we'll set the frames per second. We'll set it to standard 60. Uh, then we'll calculate the speed that the block will move at, so how many pixels per frame. So that's calculated by distance divided by time divided by frames per second. Alright. Oh, well we also need our start time. So that will be used to just for some testing to measure how accurate it, how close to three seconds the animation is taking. So now we'll actually create the animation here. So we'll create a function and we'll call it draw. I'll start out by getting the position. of where the ball is, so we'll get that using jQuery's position function. Now, what we want to do is increase the position by the speed that we have set. And then we need to actually move the ball by setting the left property. So that'll move it, but that won't stop the ball. So we need to check. No, also won't keep it going. It'll just move it to one frame. So in the past we would have used set timeout and just done draw and however many milliseconds we wanted. But now we're trying to show you how to use. Um, a request animation frame. So we'll use that. Now normally people say to put this at the beginning of the function so that it'll make sure you get the next frame and not like skip a frame from this taking too long, but I 
don't think this will take 16 milliseconds or more, so we'll just trust that. Uh, the reason I really want it at the bottom is so I can check to see when to stop. So if the position of the ball is not yet at full distance, then we'll stop or keep going. Otherwise, we'll stop. But here, I wanted to check or, or to output how long it's taken for the entire animation. So, create a new date. And we'll just log that by the console. Oh, minus start time. And then we need to actually call it for the first time, so otherwise it would never go at all. So it took just under three seconds. It says 29.55. Um, when I was running it in Chrome, it never took less than three seconds. But I don't know what happens with Firefox that it takes less than three seconds. So, speaking, well, since it's not exactly three seconds, we want to have a way to make sure that we're getting the right distance in the right amount of time. So sometimes if there's a lot of activity going on, like shaking the mouse a lot, which didn't work here, but um, this says 2866, but if you have a lot of open tabs or something, it could take longer because it'll skip some of those animation frames. So what we want to do is ensure that if we missed an animation frame, we'll still catch get the ball the the ball to catch up to where it should be. So what we're going to do is change how this works. So we're going to get the current time. And then we'll get the num the amount of time the animation has taken so far. So then we need to calculate what the position should be depending on how long it's been. So over to calculate this, we take the distance, and since we're going about 60 frames per second, we need to divide, oh, doing it along three seconds. So it's about 800 divided by 3,000 milliseconds. So we want about 0.266 pixels per millisecond. So we'll do that. Distance divided by time times a thousand. And then we multiply that by the number of milliseconds that we've got that we have so far. So it'll actually get to the right distance. Now the problem will be that once we get, if we skip a lot of frames or the total time is like over three seconds, then we'll go, have gone beyond the distance that we need to do. So we'll just do position equals that dot min. So It'll be position unless it's too far, and then it'll take the distance. So this should all remain the same. So refresh this. 
and it's about the same. See, now we get 3,004 milliseconds because it can't stop early like it has been, and it's only four milliseconds off. Do it again. 3,013. So it's makes it really accurate and it it makes your animations take a, be a lot more accurate and closer to the time that they should take. So now the other thing is though some people don't want the full 60 frames per second. Don't know why, but they might. Say they want 5 frames per second, which is really slow, but it'll help you see what see the difference a lot better. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna wrap this in a set timeout which I know kind of sounds backwards like the whole point was that we're not using set timeout but we're not using set timeout to decide when the frame gets drawn we're just using set timeout to control how often we request an animation frame. So we're going to take this 1000 divided by frames per second. So now, frames per second is 5. Divide this, we should get 200 milliseconds. So every 200 milliseconds, it'll move it again. You see it's really skippy, making big jumps. It's 3067, which is a little higher because of the amount of time between frames. So, yeah, that's about all there was to it. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Make sure to click like and leave a comment, and happy coding!